I've been daily driving the new 15 inch M4 MacBook Air for the past two months now. And while the hardware has been rock solid, what's really impressed me is Mac OS 26. It's the biggest visual overhaul Mac OS has had in years, but it's far more than just a fresh coat of paint. Mac OS Tahoe delivers genuinely useful upgrades, a modular control center, a smarter spotlight search, customizable folders, and a cleaner, more refined UI. Right away, the most noticeable change in Mac OS 26 is Apple's brand new design language, Liquid Glass. And while it's also coming to the iPhone, iPad, and TVOS, watchOS, basically everything, I'd argue it feels the most kind of refined and at home feeling here on the Mac. The dock now features glossier, more rounded icons. Finder windows have a soft layered kind of appearance to them. And the menu bar is now fully transparent and adaptive, blending seamlessly into your wallpaper for a cleaner, more modern look. You're now getting way more customization options this year as you can now tint or blur your widgets to better match your wallpaper. System icons now adapt to dark mode a lot better and you can finally personalize your app icons across the entire system. The all black Mac OS setup that Apple showed off at WWDC, you can actually like recreate that now and it looks incredible. There's even a new clear option if you want to like fully go into the liquid glass aesthetic or you can like opt for like the dark mode or the tinted icons and give your setup a much more personalized and curated feel. Now, full transparency, I'm not someone who usually customizes their icons on like my iPhone or my iPad, but on the Mac, I honestly don't mind it. I use Spotlight for almost everything, so I don't really need that like icon familiarity to find the apps that I use most. For me, it's definitely more about the aesthetic, and I think that's what Apple is really leaning into here. If you're someone who loves dialing in every detail about your setup, Mac OS 26 delivers. In between the visual overhaul and all the personalization built in, your Mac now feels more custom and just more yours more than ever before. Next, I want to highlight a few finder and file management features in Mac OS 26 that I've actually found genuinely useful. First up, colored folders. For years, we've had the default blue, and while I've gotten pretty solid muscle memory for like navigating my files, I'll admit there are still lots of moments where I stop and think like, where, where did I put that file? Which folder is this in? And reading labels just takes a lot more like mental effort than instantly recognizing a color. Now with custom folder colors, I can now move between files with far less mental friction. I haven't fully decided on my color coding system yet, but I already know it's gonna make working on my external creative drives so much smoother, especially since these drives are packed with folders for like different drafts, file types, and just tons of different projects. You can also tag folders and files with emojis, which is surprisingly handy. I already use emojis heavily in Things 3 to visualize and organize my sidebar. So bringing that same sort of like quick visual like customization to like just Mac OS as a whole, it really just makes sense. I'm planning to carry over some of the same emoji I've like allocated to all the different stuff that I have in Things 3 just over to Mac OS and really make like a really cohesive workflow. The new control center finally feels like it was built for Mac OS and not just copied from iOS and dropped into place. It now matches the look and functionality of the iPhone and iPad versions with full drag and drop customization. There's app intense support. So like third parties can now like tap into this. And then there's of course just the liquid glass design layered throughout the entire control center. There's now an edit controls button at the bottom. And from there you can add tiles for your system functions like screen recording, shortcuts, accessibility options, and more. And then you can also resize and rearrange everything to fit your setup. Controls now come in three different sizes, small icons, medium, and large panels. And you can also pin any of them to your menu bar, which is actually pretty cool. And once you run in the room, Mac OS will automatically create like extra pages that you can add to your menu bar. Personally, I've already created custom pages for things like content creation, productivity, and just like general Mac use. And it's been a total level up for how I use my Mac on a day-to-day -day use case. Spotlight has been completely re-engineered in Mac OS 26, and it's easily the best it's ever been. You can still open it with command plus space, but you'll now notice four new filter tabs, apps, files, actions, and clipboard. And these categories help you instantly narrow down what you're looking for. And the difference in speed and clarity is huge. The actions tab in particular adds some serious power. You can now send messages, start timers, create notes, and even fire off emails all right from Spotlight without even opening a single app. You can even assign your own custom trigger keywords for instant access. For example, I set up SE to send an email, ST to start a timer. Just type it in and you're done. It's fast, seamless, and shockingly capable. And yes, clipboard history is finally built into the Mac. Just hit Command plus four while you're in Spotlight Search to see everything you've copied in the last eight hours. You can scroll through, recopy, and reuse anything you've grabbed earlier in that day. I don't think it's as quite like advanced as those like apps that are like built for being your clipboard manager. But the fact that it's just built into Mac OS is just huge and it's just the right step in the right direction and a massive quality of life boost just right out of the box, finally just built into your Mac. 
Each tab is accessible via keyboard shortcuts. So while you're in Spotlight Search, just hit Command 1 for your apps, 2 for your files, 3 for actions, and 4 for your clipboard. What's even better is you can now customize the app view if you don't want like that default category layout, prefer in a list, you got it. You can also type in the name of the app directly or just scroll through like you already would, all which feels way more refined than Launchpad ever did. In fact, Launchpad is, uh, it's gone. It's replaced by a new apps tile in the dock that brings up the same interface that you now have in Spotlight and includes smart app suggestions, even pulling in apps from your iPhone using the iPhone mirroring app and sorts out everything into clear categories like productivity, utilities, and more. You can toggle views, you can search by name and even sort alphabetically. Spotlight's back on track, launching shortcuts, managing your clipboard, and even answering AI-powered queries. But if you really want to go hands-free productivity, you need to check out Willow. It's 2025. We shouldn't still be typing everything out like it's 2005. Whether it's replying to Slack messages, drafting emails, or jotting down ideas, typing typically slows everything down. With Willow, I just speak, and it converts my voice into clean, formatted text instantly. No typing, no editing, no guesswork. This isn't basic dictation, it's smarter. Willow is a Mac native AI voice assistant that lets you rename files, write blog posts, create calendar events, and much more just by speaking. And it works in pretty much any app, IA Writer, Safari, Things 3, Mail, even ChatGPT, and it runs locally, picks up on your tone and word choices, and keeps everything private. You can use voice commands like New Line or Bullet Point, or switch into AI mode to have it expand your rough thoughts into polished messages. It's like turning your voice into a keyboard. All right, so I figured why not show you guys a quick demo as to how I'm actually using Willow Voice in my day-to-day -day workflow. One of the biggest things I use it for is uh, scripting for my YouTube videos and stuff. Uh, it's just so easy to use Willow Voice because I can just speak all of my thoughts and ideas out. Let Willow Voice do all like the hard stuff like formatting, grammar, punctuation, all that kind of stuff. So uh, all I gotta do is hold down the function key and just ramble on about whatever it is I wanna talk about. Uh, my next video is the iPhone 17. So let's kind of get a, a jump on that. Hey, what's up? It's Connor. Uh, in this video, we are talking about the iPhone 17 Pro. The biggest talk right now is the new camera bump. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's gonna be this like unibody, uniform design. Uh, how that's gonna work, only time will tell because obviously you need glass for wireless charging and all the magnets for uh, MagSafe. Personally, what I think is the answer is already right in front of us. Uh, if we take a look at the M4 iPad Pros, I think that is exactly how the camera bump is going to look on the iPhone 17 Pro models or any of the 17 uh, models that are supposed to be rumored this year. Uh, the iPad usually is the staple for new tech from Apple. It's like their real world test dummy, if you will. Look at like display tech, for example, a mini LED started there and made its way over the MacBooks. I think it's going to be the same story with OLED. So yeah, I, I think the camera bump is just going to simply going to be like the M4 iPad Pro's camera bump that we have right now, just on the iPhone. It's going to be simple as that. I've been testing Willow behind the scenes and I genuinely don't want to go back to typing. If you want to work faster and just think out loud, check out Willow Voice and use the link in the description to get a lifetime 20% discount and also huge thanks to Willow for sponsoring this video. Shortcuts in macOS 26 are more powerful than ever thanks to the deep integration with Apple intelligence. You now have full control over how each shortcut runs either locally on your device via private cloud compute or even through ChatGPT integration. This alone opens up so many possibilities as you can now automate things like launching specific apps when an external SSD is connected, triggering workflows when you join a particular Wi-Fi network, or just running actions the moment a file hits a certain folder. And yes, folder watching is finally here. That means you can now sort, auto rename, tag, or even convert files the second they land into a designated folder. It's fast, seamless, and completely hands-off once you get it all set up. When you create a new shortcut, you'll see a new use model option powered by Apple Intelligence. This is where like the real magic kind of starts as you can simply describe what you want the shortcut to do and Apple intelligence generates the logic for you. No more like trial and error with variables and actions. It's a huge step towards making shortcuts accessible to basically everyone. From there, you can choose the type of model that it runs on. So you have like on device for simple and like fast automations, not really that useful, at least as of yet. You have private cloud compute, which is like Apple's like servers. And that's just like basically for more complex workflows, but you want everything to be like secure and stuff. But the main like really cool thing is that you can actually use ChatGPT and that just adds the ability to pull in like real time data, generate dynamic content and have a lot of 
faster and smarter results. I feel like this is kind of just like the start and scratching the surface as to what shortcuts are actually capable of doing. I kid you not, I'm gonna be blocking out like two full days next week, just strictly to building shortcuts. I'm gonna revamp and add so many new ones. I feel like such a nerd, but this is easily like the biggest leap shortcuts has had in basically years, maybe since it was like first introduced. And it finally feels a lot more of like a built in tool for power users and just casual users. The Apple ecosystem also got a big upgrade with the iPhone and the Mac just being more like into and being a much more seamless sort of experience as you can now access your iPhone directly from your Mac using a dedicated app complete with live activities. So things like timers, deliveries, or even like workout data just now shows up directly on your Mac, like in the menu bar or even in control center. But what really surprised me is just how good the new phone app is. For the first time, there's just a full native phone app on the Mac with favorites, recents, voicemail, and even support for call posters, live transcriptions, and call recordings. The call still runs through your iPhone, so you're still gonna want that nearby and on the same like iCloud and have the same phone number for everything, but it's just now all managed on your Mac and it feels like the way it kind of always should have worked. It also kind of feels like a hint maybe that Apple is like itching closer to giving full on cellular support to the MacBooks, which at this point just feels like the last missing piece to like a full perfect Mac experience. Some of the best features in Mac OS 26 aren't the flashy ones. There are subtle quality of life updates that make everything feel more intelligent and user focused. First up, there's a system wide rear mode. So you've seen this in like Safari where it like strips out all the distractions. So you can like just like focus on the text, but now it just works like anywhere. Even in like a Word document, Mac OS extracts the text and lets you like customize the layout, just like, a, I guess like an ebook, if you will. There's also a clever new option called driving motion cues. It adds a subtle animated dots that move and sync with like your environment and how you're moving. It helps reduce motion sickness if you're using your Mac in like a moving vehicle. So think of like a train or a car and it's like actually weirdly effective. Another great touch in system settings is you can now stop apps from adding icons to your menu bar automatically. No more digging through obscure app preferences and stuff, just block it all at a system level. The preview app gets a nice refresh and now features a cleaner, more modern UI with rounded corners and floating toolbar that makes markup tools more accessible. One underrated feature is you can now toggle dark appearance for PDFs. So they adapt automatically when you switch between light and dark mode. And it's just kind of perfect for like nighttime working. Another completely new addition is the magnifier app. And I think this one is actually a lot more useful than you think. It allows you to zoom in on anything using your Mac's camera, but even better is you can now connect to your iPhone and use it as like a zoom lens. Finally, Safari's picture in picture mode is way more accessible before picture in picture, especially like on like YouTube required like a clunky right click and then another right click and now it's just baked directly into the page menu so just click once and the video pops into its own window you can move it scrub forward and back and even control playback right from the mini player one of the new features in mac os tahoe that has like really surprised me is the ability to place widgets directly on your desktop at first i always thought like okay like they kind of look nice but i don't really want like stuff cluttering up my workspace but then after updating i started adding widgets that i would typically use over on my ipad because on the ipad especially like the 13 inch pro for an example widgets make great use of that extra screen space and on the mac it's no different especially if you're running like an external monitor for an example like i do with like macbook air sometimes it really does make great use of your screen real estate for example i have weather so i don't have to like pick up my phone to just check the weather things three lets me view like what i got going on that day and what i have added to my to-do list i have my home kit like home devices so that i can just toggle things like my lights and turn off like my, my, my freshener, for an example, like my, my air freshener diffuser, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I also have ChatGPT on there. So I can just like instantly start a voice or text chat, which is actually pretty useful. So I don't have to like launch into the app. And then I just have a simple battery status one. I've also added like news and there's also a couple other ones, but it just makes like using your Mac a lot easier in a way. Cause you don't have to open up those apps, something that I used to like usually do is once I sit at my desk, I just open up every app that I like typically would use. But now I don't have to do that because a lot of the information is just like right when I open up the screen, like it's just all right there. There's no extra windows, no app switching. It's like going from point A to B without any detours. So that's everything I've discovered so far in Mac OS 26, AKA Mac OS Tahoe. And honestly, it's shaping up to be one of the most exciting Mac OS updates in years. Between the visual overhaul, the smarter tools, powerful automation, and tighter iPhone integration. There's a lot to unpack and probably even more to come. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about Mac OS 26. Is it like everything that you're expecting that Apple miss out on stuff? What's your favorite feature? Let's just chat about it 
down below. And if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.